Good morning. Thank you for braving the snow, for climbing over the mountains. We have some reminders that I just wanted to uh, go over with you, most of which you've probably already seen on the screen. But on these, uh, just a minute, on the 29th, it's Midnight Madness, and our handbells are playing at 6.30. Um, if the weather is nice, they'll be outside, and if not, they'll be in the foyer of the church. On the 1st, which is the first Sunday in Advent, we also have um, Songs of the Season, the music concert by Camrose Camerata, the, Camro the Camrose Naria Children's Choir, and our Embellish Handbells Choir. And that's at 7 o'clock on the 1st. I don't want you to miss those things, so I'm telling you. You've seen it. It'll be in your bulletin. I'm telling you. Don't miss them. Michael, what do you not want us to miss? I bring gifts. Yeah, right. <laughs> Truly, I bring gifts from the Camrose Refugee Center. Uh, there's going to be two parts to it, tell and then the ask, of course. And the tell is, I'm a refugee, Second World War refugee. Uh, we didn't call them refugees then, we called them displaced persons. Uh, derogatory term was DPs. Um, I grew up in the uh, oldest part of uh, Winnipeg, the poorest part. But the secret there was everybody was poor, and so nobody knew any difference. In a smaller community, that doesn't happen. You see all these sort of richer people, and uh, you see the contrast. The, um, every year, the uh, refugee uh, uh, committee and, and, and center puts on a Christmas uh, event for the uh, refugees in Camrose from all over the world. So we're not focusing on the Ukrainians, we're focusing on people who are designated refugees and have been supported by the center. And the center, by the way, is uh, located in the um, Messiah Lutheran Church. And so any donations you make to the refugee center goes through the uh, Messiah and you get tax receipts for it. So there'll be a sort of a, a, an ask in a second. Uh, Yvonne, Meyerhog, who I think will be a saint in, in the future, um, puts out all kinds of efforts to look after these folks, and uh, Christmas is one of the things that she really focuses on, especially for the uh, children. So uh, she is again uh, doing a share of the joy of Christmas uh, this year, but it was interesting when she gave me this little thing uh, as an announcement. You'll notice it's black. It should be white, uh, you know, colorful, whatever else. But for a lot of people, Christmas is not a uh, white, joyous event. They've lost family members, they've lost homes, uh, they've been displaced and so forth. You can imagine what it's like uh, for them. And for the children, it's hard too, when they see around them people uh, or children, other children getting things. So the ask now is the following. Uh, the, um, they, they're looking for toys, uh, ages one to 15, games, 1 to 15, Walmart gift cards for the adults and for the uh, teeners uh, of either $25 or $50, and uh, $25 passes to the swimming pool. The last part is interesting because if you go and you donate $25 or $50 or whatever at the church, you'll get a tax receipt. So there's your getting something back and feeling good about this. Uh, and so this event is going to be held in uh, December. There are uh, three names of, again, women who are uh, generously sort of uh, leading this uh, uh, and their phone numbers. And uh, the catch is that this has to be done by November the 30th because they're organizing and going out and buying things, etc. So I appeal to you, uh, it's a gift of an opportunity to share with others who have much, much less than we do. Uh, as you get older, you focus on the religious part of, of Christmas. But when you're young, you focus on receiving something and, and enjoying it. So I leave it with you to use the opportunity accordingly. Thank you. Do you take things to Messiah? Echo, by the way, the, the, uh, the brochures are at the back there and the back there as well. And there's a phone number to uh, call if you have any further questions. Just, I, I hear her. Just Where do you take the uh, you can drop them off at, uh, at Messiah. Or, or you can ask Yvonne where she wants them dropped off. Sorry about that. Also, my hair goes out. 
If they did happen to come here, we'd make sure they got where they were supposed to. Um, I am very aware, and for, the, for some reason this year, I'm very aware of the many opportunities that we are given to share. There's a lot. There's a lot of need in the world. I'm going to tell you you don't need to share with all of them. Pick something that hits your heart. We have the refugee group. We have our own M&S, which goes in all kinds of different places. Um, Kinnets or kinsmen will be doing their thing too. We can't do everything, but each of us, if we each do something, once again, we can make a difference. You are welcome to this place. Camrose United Church, where we strive to be a place where all of God's people are welcome, a place that is safe and feels like home, a place that works to embody bold discipleship, daring justice, and deep spiritual connectedness in God's world. We share stories of the things God has done, acts of power and love shared throughout history, and from the stories, We learn how to care for each other. We remember how much God loves us, all of us. We invite the light of the holy into our space. And through the stories, we remember that in the beginning, God said, let there be light. And the light was born. We give thanks that God's light shows us where we are and where we are meant to be. And we remember God creating, loving, lighting our way from the beginning. We light a rainbow candle. Remembering the story of the commandment to love one another to accept everyone as our neighbor, worthy of love and care and respect. We light an orange candle, remembering that in those beginning stories, humankind was given the responsibility to look after the earth and all things living on it. As inheritors of the promises of Treaty 6, we are challenged to be the generations who live with integrity, to right the wrongs of the past, to actively engage in the healing of the earth and all its people.
put it at the top of the bulletin. But today is, has another name, has a few other names. Reign of Christ Sunday, Christ the King Sunday. This Sunday marks the end of our church liturgical year. It's our last Sunday in ordinary time when our green colors remind us that we grow our faith by hearing the stories of Jesus and how faith shaped those who lived before us and how it could shape us and God's world now. In a time when kings and rulers were powerful, when they could be cruel and mean and get away with it, where there were a few safety nets, where there were a few safety nets for those who lived in poverty, homelessness, and danger. Jesus used that imagery of uneven power of kingdom to encourage people to name what they would do differently, to dream about a better way of living God's world. But the people who were used to following kings used that language to describe a leader who they hoped would lead them away from servitude and slavery to live a more balanced, more fair, perhaps holy life. They used that language to indicate a leader who had power over everything. Jesus, given the role of leadership by the people, attempted to teach them new language, new expectations, new ways of living with each other. There are times and places when looking at the world we might think that nothing has changed. Power still corrupts. Cruelty still happens. But so does dreaming. Dreaming of better ways to live together. Treating each other with kindness still happens too. We try to look at the world in a different way, so we also change our language. Instead of kingdom, we use kingdom. Kingdom reminds us that we are all kin together, part of God's family. It is a nudge to treat each other with respect. So as we explore those Jesus stories, as we hear him try to change the way that people looked and lived in the world. I wonder what God's dream of the world looks like now. I wonder what the world might look like if we were to be brave enough to follow Jesus' teaching, his truth, his love. And so I invite us to sing about dreaming. I am the dream and you the dreamer. I am the song and you are the rhyme. You are the tune sung in every silence. You are the now in the endless stream of time. I am the best. I invite you to join your hearts and your voices with mine in a prayer of awareness and for God's grace. We know that there are times when we get caught up in the challenges of life. We become so focused on ourselves that we forget we are not alone in struggling, in needing, in longing. 
We know that there are times when we find ourselves missing opportunities to dream with God. We find ourselves worrying instead of acting. We find ourselves letting go of Jesus' teachings, and we are poorer for it. The world is poorer for it. Let us return to remember God's dream, the truth of Jesus' stories. Mighty and tender God, voice of the voiceless, power of the powerless, we praise you for your vision of a community of wholeness, a realm of peace, in which all who hunger and thirst are nourished, in which the stranger is welcomed, the hurting are healed, and the captive set free. Guide us by your truth and love until we and all your people bring to life your reign of justice and compassion. From Matthew 22, verse 37, we hear these words of Jesus. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, because God is there waiting for us, waiting with us. Because God is there, guiding us, teaching us, leading us. Because God loves us, we are not alone. Thanks be to God. reading from Samuel, and I'm reading from the International Children's Bible. These are the last words of David. This is the message of David, son of Jesse. The man made great by the Most High God speaks. He is the appointed king of the God of Jacob. He is the sweet singer of Israel. The Lord's Spirit spoke through me. God's word was on my tongue. The God of Israel spoke. The rock of Israel said to me, The person who rules fairly over people, the person who rules with respect for God, is like the morning light at dawn, is like a morning without clouds, is like sunshine after a rain. The sunshine makes the tender grass grow out of the ground. This is how God has cared for my family. God has made a lasting agreement with me, good in every way and strong. This agreement is my salvation. This agreement is all I want. Truly, the Lord will make it grow. And our second reading this morning comes from John 18, and I'm reading from the Common English Bible. Pilate questions Jesus. Pilate went back into the palace. He summoned Jesus and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others spoken to you about me? Pilate responded, I am not a Jew, am I? Your nation and its chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus replied, My kingdom doesn't originate from this world. If it did, my guards would fight so that I wouldn't have been arrested by the Jewish leaders. My kingdom is not from here. So you are a king, Pilate said. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this reason, to testify to the truth. Whoever accepts the truth listens to my voice. Scripture is our song for the journey, passed on from generation to generation to guide and inspire. God calls us to be doers of the word and not hearers only.
In 2011, commentator Matthew Kelly said, On Reign of Christ Sunday, we celebrate that God's reign in the entire universe has already been accomplished. We anticipate the day when that reign will be accomplished in every human heart. And there is that king language again, reign. It has connotations of power over rather than power with. I agree with another preacher, Alison Connolly Vetter, that I would name my faith as about collaborating with God in co-creating heaven on earth. That rather than experiencing God as that unyielding dictatorial God, I experience God as a relational, guiding God who nourishes my growing in faith and changes my directions when I go astray. Because I do. But God brings me back. When I bump against this reign of Christ Sunday, I am therefore looking for God's dream of a world of love. And I am looking to hear from Jesus' stories how that might be accomplished. I don't agree that God's reign has already been accomplished in the entire universe. When we see the world today, there are so many places and spaces and people who haven't had the opportunity to live with love. I think that there is a lot to be accomplished but perhaps the one step at a time method we appear to be using is not as effective as some might think it should be. There is much more to be done before we could even contemplate sitting back and saying, we've done it. What then might this Jesus Sunday be about? I think this is about endings and beginnings, transition times and transformational times. And I wonder if it's about not just remembering the stories of old, but creating new stories to inspire more people to learn about God's world, to live into God's dream. Jesus challenged the language used and the old meanings that people put on it. Jesus boldly asked both Pilate and the leaders of the Jewish temple to look to the truth behind the words they were using to look for a way to reset themselves on the way to transformation. He told them that who they viewed kingship, how they viewed kingship as a challenge to their own power wasn't what he was bringing. And they didn't listen. This man who asked them to look at how they served God and God's people differently was viewed with suspicion and fear. And by clinging to their own ways, they got stuck there. Change came anyway. Not with a smooth transition, a very bumpy one. And it is still happening. Because the truth that Jesus came to share is still emerging because there are still groups of people following Jesus' stories, looking for ways to be part of a changing world that longs to nurture and grow people in the truth that God is with us. Once again today we heard a story of Jesus coupled with a scripture that he would have heard in his church and faith. The words told by the prophet Isaiah and attributed to King David, speaking of a life of fairness, of respect for God, speak of creating an atmosphere for growing. They speak of God's caring, God's willingness to be in covenant with imperfect people. <laughs> Scripture helped guide Jesus in being the man of action, the man of truth that he would become. We can see this scripture's influence in the ways that he spoke of fairness of loving God, of knowing God with him in all times and places. What language do we have to change so that we can move beyond where we are to where God needs us to be? What language and attitudes do we have to change so that everyone feels as though they are welcomed into God's world? 
Today, we mark the end of the church liturgical year and find ourselves on the cusp of another beginning, another journey of hearing God's voice through the ages, offering hope, offering to come and live with us, to invite us in to be part of transforming the world. We teeter on the edge of that beginning, finding ourselves stretching out to open the door to Advent. This season of slowing down, of waiting, of getting ready, is a church season when we once again hear stories of people who heard Jesus' teaching and responded in ways that opened up more creating, more beginnings, more communities. This season prepares us for God coming to be among us, in partnership with us, as we learn, as we look at the world in different ways, as we begin to transform so that we can bring about something amazing together. On this Reign of Christ Sunday, Christ the King Sunday, Jesus Sunday, Let's follow the words of Jesus into our next chapter of growing truth. Amen. God asks us to live our faith by making a difference for someone. Jesus said, everyone is our neighbor, so we make a difference by offering what we can to our own church and to neighbors near and far. Gifts with Vision is your opportunity to make a difference in someone's life at any time of year with proven impact without ever leaving home. Since 2011, Gifts with Vision has provided over $3.8 million to support projects. These include Indigenous Canadian partners, Canadian partners, and Global Mission and Service partners. We are truly grateful for every single gift that you can give. In a world where isolation and distance are still all too common, Gifts with Vision provides connection. In a time when emergencies have left so many people without homes, health, or livelihood, Gifts with Vision 
provides hope. Select gifts now or anytime can help transform lives. Thank you for celebrating special occasions by making a difference in the world through Gifts with Vision. Select gifts now or anytime and help transform lives. So Gifts with we have been um, featuring Mission and Service. And Gifts with, with Vision is um, an opportunity for us in some instances to directly decide where some of our funds are going. Typically, we have had a catalogue that comes out right round about this time of year. So <laughs> you heard that word, didn't you? Typically. Um, so that you could flip through it and find some suggestions as to where you would like some of your mission and service funds to go. About, oh, I don't know, a month ago, maybe three weeks, we learned we weren't getting a catalogue this year. So, giftswithvision.ca on the bottom. If you go on there online, you can still make your um, donations. If you would prefer to have some pictures and some options, I'm going to print some and put them on the bulletin boards downstairs, and we can facilitate that that way. It has projects from local to Canadian to global, where the United Church of Canada is partnering with other people around the world to be the support that is needed. So we just want to encourage ourselves to think about how do we do that giving? How do we do the sharing that we can? And right at the very beginning, I said today, we know everybody can't do everything. But if there is something that appeals to your heart, what can you give? We each have something we can share. We can share prayer. It's important. Through the voices of our heart and our minds, we can add hope and healing into the world. We can share our time as workers, as listeners, as storytellers, as teachers and learners. We can share our treasure. And we know that some people have more spare change than others, but every penny counts when it teams up with others. Through this togetherness, we support our church and its works and the works of the global church reaching out to care for all of God's world a little bit at a time. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Holy God, giver of life 
leader of love, teacher. The words of Jesus call us to be the truth of love in the world, the truth of justice, the truth of compassion, the truth of giving. We look around your world and see so many places that need those truths. We know we can't be all that alone. So we pray. We pray so that we can connect with your wisdom. We pray to bring those truthful energies into the air we breathe. We pray because the world needs to bear the truth together. We pray for the leaders in the world, those who lead in small groups, small communities, small ways. Those who lead in large groups, large communities on the world stage, we pray that they will know the power of their words, their actions. We pray that they will honor the trust that others place in them so that the world will open up and be safe and caring and loving. We pray for those who are hurting, who are afraid, who are unheard, unseen. For the victims of violence from war in their homes, in their schools. For the victims of abusive power who lose control over their own lives. For the ones who feel they have just become a number, devalued. We pray for those who stand up for justice for those who teach us what truth looks like and feels like, for those who raise their voices so that we don't miss what we need to see or hear or know. We pray for a share of their courage, their strength, their boldness. We pray for those who grieve, those who have lost loved ones through war, through disaster, through disease, through health challenges, through the passage of time. We pray for those whose dreams have been shattered, whose lives will never be the same again, whose innocence is broken. We pray for hope that somehow in the hurting and grieving, in the leading and following, we will find strength in your presence with us. That somehow we will hear the voice of Jesus inviting us to be the truth in the world. That somehow we will know that endings are a door for new beginnings to enter through. That in our living we will be seen to respect and love the Lord our God that in our living we will boldly follow the example of Jesus to open all the doors of life to let love in. All this in the name of the one who teaches, leads, and loves us as you do. Amen. As we reach this point in our church year that feels like an ending, we know that a new beginning is about to happen. We are blessed to remember God with us, giving us words to remember, giving us courage to be bold. And we know that times of change lead us forward with God into new ways of living and loving. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God.
with spirit-filled hearts for welcoming all of God's people. with commitment to be part of the healing of God's world. Let us follow the light of Christ that shines into all the corners of the earth, showing us where we are and where we are meant to be. The Spirit of God, breathe it in. And know that God is indeed with us wherever we go. Amen.